Hello everybody, here's Matthias and yeah, initially was the plan I'm here with Timo Koban. Unfortunately, he's a little bit late and I have two other stories to say at the beginning of the webinar. So first of all, sorry for my English, my English is not the best one. And the second one, maybe you can hear my voice. So I'm a bit cold, so I apologize my voice because it's not the best way to make a webinar with a cold. So I'm, hopefully I'm not coughing and so on. But yeah, let's start with our topic tonight. The topic tonight is trading with five useful indicators. And maybe you know there's a world of plenty of millions of and indicators and yeah, our focus today should lay on only five. And these five indicators I want to show you, which I find are very, very useful and helpful in trading, are the moving average, volume, the most underrated indicator in my eyes, then the RSI, the ADX, and the parabolic star. So Maybe you already know something about one of these indicators, maybe three, four, maybe all of them, but hopefully I can give you some tips um, how to use them in praxis and for trading to get a trade and, or go out of a trade. So these five indicators will be on today's agenda. Okay, just another question to you. Can you hear me and can you see the screen? Is there everything okay for you? Ah, now Timo is here, so I want to make him as a presenter first. So give me just a little time for it. So now it should be working. Timo, can you hear me? Hopefully, yes. So I made you as a participant, as a presenter, and now you should speak to me as well. So please turn on your mic and then it should work. Okay. Seems not working. Yeah, but I want to go further in the webinar tonight. So yeah, let's start with the moving. Oh, now, Timur, I can hear yes, you. Yes, yes. I'm here. I'm back again. Sorry for the delay. But no, uh, I got very really I got some important calls. I hope uh, mercy me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah every, everything is fine. So I I said already my three stories. So for my cold, for my voice, and for my bad English, and <laughs> everything should be working now. Okay. Yeah. The first indicator we are talking about tonight is the moving average. Um, yeah. The moving average is the most I would say the most popular and the the, the well known indicator in the world of indicators regarding technical analysis and trading. Um, the moving average presents a line based on prices of a fixed number of periods. So usually the closing prices. So let me give you a little example. So the closing prices in a stock or index or maybe a commodity, it doesn't matter. So let's say in a stock is $10, $10, $10, $10, and $10, then you have a period of time of five periods. And the average, now the big question is, what is the average of five times 10? So maybe you can write the answer in the chat box to give me a clue what you are thinking. So if nothing changes over the time in five periods, Every time the closing price is 10. What do you think? What is the average on these prices? So please use the chat box and give me an answer. Yeah, be... give us an answer, okay. Ah, all people are very shy tonight. Yeah, that but that's not a problem at all. Um, yeah, the moving average of these, of course, is 10 because nothing has changed. But you maybe you get an idea if the average, let's say, for example, here is, um, yeah, this is euro dollar, but let's say it's 123, 122, 121. Then we have a period of time of three periods. And the average then is 
the midterm. So it's 122. So what you have to do, what now what's it's not necessary to do, what but what the indicator does is they calculate all these single numbers together as a sum and then divide by the number of periods. And then of course you have the average of this. And this average can represent it as a line. If you make every dot by dot by dot by dot, and then you connect the dots together, then of course it's, it's shown a line. And this is what you can see here. This is the moving average of a specific period of time. For this example here, you can see this is the 100. And I will show you a more practical example later on. But you can see here, this red line is a moving average in a candlestick chart. Because everything what you can see here, these are candlesticks. Because this is a candlestick chart, a Japanese candlestick chart. And yeah, you can work with this very um, yeah, successful, uh, for example, you can use them to enter a trade or to exit a trade. You can yeah, mix it up with several things. So this is, I want to show you the next, but first of all, of course, it is very important to know that if you take a lower period of time, then the more sensitive the moving average reacts, of course. Yeah? If you only have two periods, and one of these numbers is much bigger or much uh, lower than the other, then the average is something between. And if you have, let's say, 1,000 periods, then the average is moving very, very slow and it is very laggy. Um, yeah, maybe this is very important. And of course, you can take all, not only the closing price to calculate the moving average, you can also take the exponential moving average, the linear weighted linear, um, moving average, or the smooth weighted. But in most times, when you see, or if you see a moving average, then it will be the simple moving average, also called SMA. Now, you can applicate this moving average or this indicator on every time frame, so on the daily time frame, hourly, minute, weekly, monthly, um, it depends on your time frame you want to trade. But the general is to say that the higher the, high, the higher the time frame, the more or the better are the signals you, you get from. Okay, in general, it is to say it is a trend indicator. So you, you can work with moving averages in trending markets very good, but you should avoid moving averages in ranging markets. And what I mean by ranging markets is something like this. Yeah, the market goes sideways, or this one here, euro dollar, the recent two or three months, the market only goes sideways. And then, of course, moving averages are not so helpful. Except you go to other time frames, let's say the hourly chart. And of course, in the hourly chart, the picture looks pretty different. Okay, how to work with moving averages? You can use the moving average pretty simple as an indicator for a bullish market if the moving average is rising. Then it is very, very simple, but then it is a bullish market. And if the moving average is declining or falling, then it's a bearish market. There's an, another interpretation. So for example, the second one, if the current price of a stock or currency or whatever is above the moving average, then it indicates or signals a bullish market. And if the market price is below, then it's a bearish signal. Yeah, then we have another good thing to work with moving averages. And of course, you can watch out for crossing the moving average. And with crossing, I mean, and now let's take a look at practical example. So this is here the euro dollar on a daily chart. And let's add now the moving average. Moving average, here we are. And now this is the period of nine. Let's change this pretty simple to, you know, let's say 50. It's just an example, you can take whatever you want. 
And now you can see here, this is the moving average. And here, the moving average is falling. And this indicates a bearish market. And at this period of time here, the moving average is rising. And this indicates a bullish market. So this is very, very simple. And this is what I wanted to show you with the first one here, rising and falling of the moving average. And the second point, the current price is above or below the price. Then you can say here, at this period of, at this point here, the market price is above the moving average. And this is a bullish signal. And you can see it, it goes up. And vice versa, if the market price is below the moving average here at this point, then the market direction is down. Or we have a bearish market. And this is what we see then. Of course, moving average is not the holy grail. You have to be, yeah, you, you need to be careful uh, if you want to work with the moving average and maybe you add some very good filters, for example, the ADX and the ADX, we want to speak about it later on. Um, yeah, but these are examples for working with moving averages. But as I mentioned here, we have more possibilities to work with moving averages. For example, the third one, crossing the price and closing on the opposite side. What I mean by that? What I mean by that is very simple. So for example, let's have a look at this here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So here at this point, the price is crossing the moving average and closing below the moving average. You can see this here very clear. And this indicates we will have more likely falling prices. Yeah, and this is what happens afterwards. And maybe as an example that it's not a guarantee to work with this approach is for example here, you see the closing price of this candlestick here is above the moving average. And this indicates bullish prices, but at the same time you can see here afterwards, it doesn't work very well. And therefore, you maybe should pay attention to the moving average itself. So if it's rising or if it's yeah, declining. And at this point here, the moving average was not rising. So we have a bullish signal because the closing price was above, but we have a bearish signal because the moving average was declining. And yeah, so take only the spots where both is in, in your direction. For example, here, the closing price is below the moving average. At, at this point, the moving average is going down. And this indicates a very good spot to go short in the euro dollar. Um, everything clear so far? Maybe you can give me a little feedback in the chat box. Uh, from my side, my side is clear. Okay, okay, good. Thanks, Timur. Um, then let's but continue. How about, but how about the others? How about the others? Is that everything clear? What, what? Uh, yeah, is then no, nobody is, is, is speaking or uh, chatting with me. So maybe my voice is too angry or. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're too shy, I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Then let's continue. Yeah. Um, it will be recorded, anyways. Um, yeah, then the fourth point is at another moving average and observe the crossing. What is this? That is a little bit complicated. So we add one more moving average here. And let's make this one, for example, 21 periods. And the style is a little bit different that you can do separate that. So here, what I mean by crossing two different moving averages is, for example, this one here. Or maybe this example here is not so clear. So let's go a little bit back in the past. So for example, here, you can see at this point here, the 1st of December 20, uh, 2017, the 21 moving average, which is, um, yeah, which is here in, in red, crossed the blue one from below to the upside. And this is a bullish signal at this period of here. And if you go along here, for example, uh, let me show you here maybe one 
small arrow. So here at this point, then you go along here and you hold this position all day long until this point, because here the red line crosses the blue one from above. So you can see you go along at, let's say around 119 and you exit the trade at 123. So you collect almost 400 pips just with this little simple strategy that using moving averages. And you can make this, for example, here, go short at this point and long here. Yeah, okay, this is not working. So you lose a little bit, only a little bit, not so much. But yeah, of course, you should only use moving averages in clear trend markets and not in, in range markets. Okay, yeah, and the best one is, of course, combi combining all the procedures I've mentioned to you above. So, for example, only use crossing moving averages if both moving averages are rising. For example, at this year, this point, the red line was rising, but the blue one wasn't. And yeah, so you can use this information as a filter. And of course, you will get better information and better results and better signals. Okay, yeah, this was the moving average. Then let's continue to volume. In my eyes, the most underrated indicator, if you want, so that it is an indicator. So there are some people there saying volume is not a real indicator, but let's say it is one then the indicator has an immensely valuable significance because you can know what a price movement is useful or not. So in simple words, if the volume shows you a confirmation of the price movement uh, in terms of the volume is high and the price movement is high, then everything is perfect. And you can use this as an enter or as a exit from a trade. But if a price movement in the market is very, very high, yeah, for example, as you can see a, a big bearish or big bullish candle in the market, but the volume is very, very low, then it is useless because the, the price movement is not confirmed by the volumes. So the market participants are not, um, how can I say that? The, the, the participants have not created this big move with a lot of volume and therefore it can, yeah, you, you can say it's a kind of a fake. Um, let's have a look here at some examples in the euro dollar. Maybe you have some other suggestions so I can check Apple, Tesla, whatever you want. Just type it in the chat box and I will looking out for it. Um, but first of all here, let's at the volume. Now you can see here, these are the volumes and the bigger the volume bars here and the price movement above, then the better is the signal. So for example, if you're looking out for reversal patterns, double top, double bottom, or evening stars and evening uh, and morning stars and so on, reversal patterns, engulfing patterns and so on. And if the second or the third candle is the confirmation for the pattern, and then the volume is also very high, then you have the perfect spot to enter a market or a trade. But let me give you an example. Um, it's not so easy to find one. Um, and therefore, of course, the, the sick here, for example, this one. But let's make it a little bit more. So here, you can see here, this is a morning star pattern. Let me highlight this. Yeah, and the market goes down. We have a big bearish candle. Then we have a doji. And then not a perfect one, but yeah, a, a quite good one, bullish candle. And you can see the volume is going up only a little bit, but on a very high level. So if you compare this to all the other candles, then these three candles are much bigger than the average. 
And this is a good signal to more rising prices in the near future. I'll let me give you another example here, yeah, this one. Could you show this also or as a comparison for the Apple share, for example? Yes, of course. I, I can switch to Apple. Um, just let me take this one uh, as a last example here for Euro dollar. Um, you can see a massive downtrend here in Euro dollar, a big bearish candle. And the big bearish candle is almost engulfed by a big bullish candle. So we have here a bullish angle thing. And the bullish angle thing is confirmed by a very high volume. So this makes the confirmation here perfect. And this would be a good spot to go long in Euro dollar at this time. At end of May 2018, it was. Where does the volume? A volume in euro dollar come from? So this is a very good question. Um, here from trading view, I, I'm pretty sure it's in, yeah, 99% I would say um, the volume here comes from the futures market. Um, if you use a broker, a CFD broker for example, then the volume you can see there is maybe not the best one because you can only see the volume which is traded on the broker's page and not on the entire market. So uh, the best way to use the volume, to be honest, is to use the futures prices and the futures charts and the futures volume. Um, and if you want to make stocks, for example, Apple, as Timo has mentioned, then you can work with the volume on almost every public chart software or chart homepage. So for example, TradingView is a good one. Uh, Trader Fox, we are working together as a partner. You can use them very good. Um, yeah, but this is a good question. The volume comes from the stock exchange where the underlying is traded. For example, Apple is traded on the NICE, I would say. Um, euro dollar is not euro dollar. Euro dollar is just a euro future, and it is, it is traded on uh, in in London. Um, yeah, and so on. So, for example, if you want to trade oil, then it's the NYMEX in London. If you want to trade wheat or something like that, then it's the CME in Chicago, and and so on. So, the volume comes from the stock exchange. Okay, um, any other questions? You, you mentioned Apple, Timor. Just an example here on Apple, you have something in mind? Yes. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean in mind? Uh, just, in, just in general, yes, the, 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 the uh, decline, the decline in the last few days, you know, mm -hmm. how the volume reacts there. Yeah, it's, it's important or it's, it's interesting. So. Apple, and I'm very interested in Apple because I'm invested in, um, went down from 23.5 down to almost 140. And it was even closer, but you can see it here because it's not, it's only the, the price in the open hours and not the other ones. Um, yeah, but I cannot see any specifics in the volume. So the big down moves are yeah, combined with high volume, which is not so good. So I would prefer to see here up days with a very high volume and down days with a low volume, but this is not the case. So it indicates slightly that the down move in Apple is not finished yet in my eyes. Okay, but back to the topic. The RSI. The RSI is not an indicator, it is an oscillator. An oscillator um, are kind of indicators, of course, uh, but it represents a fixed band, so usually between 0 and 100. So you have only values between 0 and 100. You will never see a RSI um, at one, 110 or minus five or something like that. It's only between zero and 100. The RSI works well in range and in support and resistance. So in ranging markets where you can not use very good moving averages, then you can take the RSI. The RSI is working well in ranging and trending, uh, in ranging markets, but bad in stable trend markets. 
then the RSI makes absolutely no sense to use. So, yeah, we have the RSI between 0 and 100, and we have an overbought and an oversold zone. So the oversold zone is between 0 and 20, or sometimes 0 and 30, and the overbought zone is between 70 and 100 or 80 and 100. It depends on your, uh, yeah, some, some traders take 20 and 80 and some takes 30 and 70. So it, it, yeah, you, you can make it as you want. So it's, it's up to you. Um, yeah, of course you have to choose a period of, yeah, a number of periods. So for example, here is shown the 14, but you can go for 50 or 100. Um, again, the shorter the selected number of periods, the more sensitive the movements in the indicator and false signals more likely if you take smaller numbers. So I would suggest to take a bit bigger the number, then you have less signals, but the signals are more valuable. So let's add here the RSI. It's the relative strength index, and I love them so much, so I added them twice. Just a joke, so let's take one. Um, yeah, this is the RSI with 14. Let's change this to, let's say, 21. 21 of three weeks, uh, four weeks, representing a month. And you can see here, let's make it a little bit bigger, the picture and maybe don't use this number. So for example, here, at this period of time, we have an uptrend. So you cannot use the RSI here very good. But at this point here, yeah, you can see here, we, we are in a kind of range. And the range is represented here by this. Yeah, we have a range, and in a range, you can work with the RSI very good. So for example, at this period here, um, we have um, the RSI below 30 and it's on the bottom of the range. This is a good spot to going long and vice versa. So if you have a, a range investigated somewhere, for example here, Let's highlight this one here. Unfortunately, the RSI is not outside the 30, 70 below. But I'm pretty sure you know what I mean. So if you have, or oh, maybe we can change just here the period of time back to 40, then it's more sensitive. And then of course you get more signals. And here, for example, this is the spot. So we are at the bottom of the range, and at the same time the RSI is below 30, this would be a good spot to go long. And you can see here pretty clear what's happened afterwards. The market goes up almost to the top of the range, and also the RSI is rising to, to 70, but it doesn't give us a signal to go short but you know uh, what I mean. With using RSI only in ranges and not in very strong trend markets. Any questions regarding this specific indicator? To be clear, see. Okay, okay. Yeah, then let's continue. We have two more indicators. So the next one is the ADX. Um, the ADX is a trend indicator, and the ADX helps us a lot with identifying a trend, if a trend is strong or not strong. And yeah, can be used to, to make scaling in. So for example, you are in a trade and you are not sure about the strengths of the trend, then you can use the ADX. And if the ADX shows you that the current trend is very strong, then of course you can add more positions, you can make scaling in um, and vice versa, of course, for, for yeah, if you think maybe the trend is, is ending very soon, then you can scaling out and uh, make your 
position size a, bit, a little bit smaller. Um, again, and this is almost for every indicator I'm showing you, um, you can choose the period and the period, yeah, has a very deep impact on the sensitivity. So the smaller the period, then of course, the more sensitive to movements in the indicator and the more false signals you will have and vice versa. Um, the ADX is used pretty simple. So a reading below 25 indicates a weak trend. A reading above 25 signals a strong trend. And a reading between 30 and 50 signals an extremely strong trend. And then, of course, if you have an ADX over 50, then it signals a very, very extreme trend, very close to the peak and could soon reverse. So then you should take some of your positions off the table. So let's see the ADX in praxis. So I can make an example here with Apple. I think Apple is a pretty good example to show you the ADX. Um, let's add the indicator ADX. And then you don't use the other uh, the other lines here. So let's deactivate them. So now you have here the ADX, and I just want to highlight the lines here. So let's make this. A, and now the twenty five. Let me highlight the twenty five. Then. 30, or oh, let's, let's make the 50. Let's find it fair enough to explain this with 50 and 25. So everything between 25 and 50 are a strong trend. Yeah, you, let's move this here away. Um, for example, here in this, we have a very good up move in Apple. And then we reached a very high level above 50. So we were here close to 63. And yeah, it's a yellow light on the traffic lamp, um, the traffic lights, I would say. So be careful at these levels because the market could be reversed very soon. And what's happened only two weeks later, Apple reached its absolutely high and then goes down. Yeah? And of course, the down move is also a trend, but it has to be established first. Then you can see here the ADX becomes a very good strength in terms of trend strengths. And we have a very good and intact and stable downtrend. And this downtrend has not reached the level of 60 yet, but maybe soon. So you can see here, we are in the, at the level of 50 and 50 represents a very, very, very strong trend. And maybe we are pretty close to the end of the trend. And this is what I wish for my <laughs> account, I can say. Uh, so maybe Apple is moving sideways or comes back a little bit. I would prefer to see that to be honest. Yeah, this is the ADX. And of course, you can use the ADX perfectly together with the moving average, because the moving average is working very well in very strong trends. And to know if a trend is very strong, you can use the ADX. So I would suggest to, to using the moving average together with the ADX, because you need a kind of filter uh, to have better signals with the moving average. Okay. Yeah, then the last one. The last one uh, is the parabolic SAR. Parabolic SAR is a trend following indicator, and the parabolic SAR is basically a strategy of its own. So you can make trades only with the parabolic SAR indicator. I would recommend to do that, but it is developed to do so. So I don't know who was the inventor of the parabolic SAR, but um, I think it was Larry Williams. Um, not 100% sure, so 
don't um yeah i i think it was larry williams um, he also invented the cci the commodity channel index and uh, sri is stop and reversal so you can see maybe in this picture not so clear but i will change to the trading view and you can see it pretty clear you can see the little dots above and below the chart and this gives you the stop so these are the stops level stop levels and you can use this indicator pretty good for trailing stops because every day or every period of course you can trade the power on the hourly chart and the daily chart weekly monthly and so on um, and this gives you the right stop level for the next period of time um, and the switch between the dots are above and below the chart are the entry points and you can also use them as the exit point and together with the adx it is the perfect match uh, to have this indicator together with the adx because you need to know if the trend is strong enough to use the parabolic sign indicator yeah let's see the adx in practice so now we can go with the adx that's not a problem. Parabolic SAR. So the parabolic SAR is the same with the moving average in the chart and all the others, the ADX and the RSI, for example, are below the chart as an external window. Um, yeah, let's go here with um, Apple. So Apple here at this period of time was in an strong enough uptrend and also the parabolic star shows you to go long because the dots are below the chart and if the dots are below the chart then you have an uptrend and if the dots above the chart then it's a downtrend but for the entry you need a switch between the dots are above and below so for example you can go here at this point go long but at this time you can see if you if you work with the adx as a confirmation tool or as a confirmation filter then you couldn't or you wouldn't enter the trade here um yeah but here at this point for example you can see the dot is below it's maybe it's very hard to see for you but here the dot is below the chart then it switches switches back above the chart and at the same time Ah, it, it was not a perfect spot, so the ADX was not on the highs. But if you ignore the ADX, just to explain you the parabolic star, then you can see it, it works pretty well. So let me give you here an example. So you enter the market here and you go out here. So you can see it was collecting some pips or ticks because it's apple it's not a forex and at this point here you go you go short until this point you make money as well and then you can go along here and until this point you can see you would have made money here 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 I'm not sure here, so maybe you are break even. Then you enter the market here again, exit here, you make a lot of money, and so on and so on. So the parabolic star is a very powerful indicator in my eyes. And yeah, I think it is worth to work with the parabolic star. And maybe I can say that we have also some good, um, yeah some good courses about the parabolic stuff. For example, I, ju I ju want, just want to mention it. It's the 15 minute trend hunter strategy. So maybe you have a look. Um, and of course you can go premium. Um, it's English. So you can learn a lot more about all the indicators and signals and Forex and so on. In our premium service but maybe timo you want to take over and say something about our premium service 
premium sir. Ah. The first question is, Matthias, how many indicators do exist to use? What do you think? How many? Sorry, I, uh, yeah, how many, couldn't hear you. How many indicators? How many technical indicators you can use for a charting system at all? Oh, that's that's. I think it's the Gretchen question. Uh, we would say in Germany, um, there's no clear answer to them. I would say, as hmm, how can I say that? Try to use not so much. So use only them that gives you a value. So it doesn't make any sense to use 20 indicators if only five or three of them make sense to you. So maybe the, the chart looks great if you have 10 indicators in it, but it doesn't make any sense and confuses you and it, it doesn't lead you to better results. So I would say and suggest to use only some two, three, maybe four indicators and then that, okay. that's it. Got a question. Uh, how many indicators are, I think, um, the most important indicators will be will be teach by by Tradimo, yes? Yes, so, yes, yes. Okay. So if if I would be a member of premium access or I would register it, so I would get the access to all indicators who, which are important for me, I think. Yeah? Yes, yes. We we teach every or I would say of course the world of indicators are so huge, but I would say we are covering 95% of all indicators you can find out there. So I would give everyone the advice, just registrate, yes, on the premium access. Yeah, I will give you the link. And everyone, everyone will get access to all the important indicators which they have, which they can use. Yes. Okay, that's, that's great. True. That's, That's true. great. So I put the link in the chat window so I can give you to everyone the advice just to link, uh, just to click on the link, register on the premium access, just look in, yeah, which indicators are important. And the second is if you hire up the premium access, yeah, to, uh, for example, a payable access, you will get more information, yeah, to all what you need to, I, I would say, to earn more money. Definitely, because uh, you know everyone. The, just only Benjamin Franklin said, "Yeah, <laughs> I think you know this also as well, uh, <laughs> yes. Matthias." An investment in education always pays the highest returns. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin said this about 150 years ago, and uh, this is what I can tell to everyone and give to everyone the advice: click on the link, get the premium access, and then I can tell you you will hire up your performance at the stocks or in trading yeah. at all. And additionally, of course, you get access to the paid webinars. So we have some pretty cool webinars only for premium members. For example, tomorrow is one again. And you get access to our chat um, here, to our English discussion and Signal community. So in the Signal community, we are managing a 100 Ten thousand dollars account, real money account, and we give you all the trades we are making. So, for example, yeah. you're, you're giving the trading signals, and how how was the performance of your real real money account? Uh, last the, the last year we are starting in, in May, so we only had eight months left, and we were hit by a black swan. A black swan is a very very nasty event in the market, um, but yeah, we were successful, so we, we end up by $110,000, so 10% in eight months, which is almost 15% per year. It was not the best year, but compared to some other very yeah public and good hedge funds, uh, which go broke last year, uh, I think it's a great uh, it's a great result. So so that means that means if I would or, or, uh, yeah if I had registered last year yeah in the premium access getting the trading signals I would I would have now uh, more than ten percent of my account is that correct? Yes, if you make this trade we are making then then you are correct. Yeah. So to everyone really so. Um, when I have got the premium access, means that I would get every trading signal what you are trading, yeah? 
Yes, immediately. So maybe one minute delay or maybe sometimes five minutes delay, but it doesn't matter because the trades we are making, uh, we are holding these trades um, usually for a week, two, three or four weeks. Um, this one here was, uh, yeah, this was a quickie, <laughs> a very short one. Uh, we opened this trade on uh, the 28th of December and we closed this trade yesterday with a profit of $343. So that's the, I think this is the best advice. Just click on the link, get the premium access from Tradimo, and then uh, definitely on the one hand, no, the first line is you will get all the information what you need for your indicators, fundamental and technical analysis, and second is you would get also automatically all trading signals. So this is the best best investment what we what what uh, what we can make or what uh, the individuals can make for the trading. Yeah. I agree, <laughs> but you yeah. don't have to make me uh, self-confident about it because, <laughs> <I mean, laughs> of course, yeah, okay. so any questions left? We will give you a minute to type in some questions down. So, and... yeah, to everyone, everyone has got now the opportunity in the next few minutes, yes, to ask some questions uh, in direction to Matthias one of the best traders, or he is the best trader at Tradimo and giving you the trading signals, but with the condition to have the premium access, of course. Yes. Good. Okay, then let's wait for some questions. And if nothing happens... Then we will log out, I think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but, Matthias, thanks for your, uh, for your presentation. Thanks for showing us the best indicators or the most important indicators. And everyone has got the opportunity to get these informations at all at Tradimo. And for further questions, they can contact us anytime. Yeah. And thanks for your assistance, Timo. And here you can contact us under support at Tradimo.com. Very good. For the questions. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Timo. And thank all to the others. And we will nice. see you all next week. Okay. Have a nice evening. Yeah. You too. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.